In lieu of the proper tool, my friends all asked me, but it took three of us to get this thing compressed. Hey, look, there's one. There's another one. Where's my super suit? <laughs> and they're wearing super suits. Good Lord. What would I have to deal with down here? First mod for this transmission. Again, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I don't know what I'm doing. This is all from research I found online. So we're actually dual feeding the direct drum. So in order to do that, we need to tap this hole. This was just a, a fluid passage. So we're gonna go ahead and run the tap through it. We're tapping it out to a 3 8 16, And then we're gonna just put a set screw in there to block that passage. <laughs> the hole's drilled and tapped. We went ahead and built our own little half-ass uh, imitation set screw. We're gonna jam in this hole and block the fluids. So after spending about a week in the woods chasing deer, time to get back to work on this transmission, trying to figure out where I left off. I've got parts from two different transmissions here. It's a good time. I have my clutches soaking and some brand new ATF. So we're gonna start putting things back together. What's this? my output shaft. Isn't that all parts here? We have this bearing on here, which has this little uh, ring on it. The ring goes into the piston, so we have to make sure we put that back in in the right orientation. So these teeth here are what actually the cart pawl engages against. <coughs> They look nice and clean. I'm afraid on my other transmission, they're not so nice and clean. I'm having issues with that one holding it apart. Rear drum with planetaries. So this is our rear drum. I've already inspected all my planetary teeth. I don't see any issues. Bearings all sound good. Time to start dropping in some clutches. So clutches. So again, these clutches we took out are just absolute garbage. So we're gonna put new clutches in it, and since these steels are cooked, we're actually gonna steal the steels. <laughs> Say that twice. Steal the steels out of my uh, 4L60E because they're so much better shape. So just making sure that I have the right amount of everything. This bottom steel is different. See there's different amount of teeth on that. So that's, that's something to pay attention to. One out clutch. Steel, worn out clutch, really burnt steel. Worn out clutch, steel, worn out clutch, steel, worn out clutch, steel. One, two, three, four, five steels. One, two, three, four, five steels. This weird guy we're not putting in. I'm just gonna use these steels instead of these steels. We're gonna start with the steel. Nice, shiny new soaked steel, or clutches rather. Is it worms? That's it. piece to go in is the last friction surface, the last clutch, because uh, the next piece has another fr friction surface the clutch rides again. My anti-clunk spring, anti spring rather, is going in next. If I can find it, it's here somewhere. 
upper plate has another name that eludes me at the moment, but this one is actually the one from the 4L60. Again, I double checked uh, to make sure they were exactly the same dimensionally, which they are. This one supposedly is made a little better, so that's why we're we're gonna go ahead and use this one. It's just plain newer, it's gotta be better, right? So now that all that stuff's back down in there, the anti-clunk spring and that, whatever that top plate is, now we're gonna put this giant, uh, giant snap ring in the case here. All right, let's get this guy in here. We've got to put some new clutches in here and do a little cleaning. Get the snap ring out of there. Together, yeah, let's not mess with that anymore. So this is another one of those spring things that we have to compress. Let's see if that tool I build will work for this too. If not, we can just take it over to the press and compress that one, but I think this has a chance of possibly working for this application as well. Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. No, I needed a deep well. Not a ton of pressure, just enough to be able to get that snap ring pried out of there. Pretty handy little tool I built. Some scrap metal and a little bending in my shop press. Of course, that could be done in a vise just as easy. Of course. None of the springs are captured, so we have to put them all back later. And here's our piston. So we have a lip seal to replace here, and there's another lip seal to replace inside here. You have to pay attention the direction these lip seals go. So this one, the opening is up. This one, the opening is down. See how I'm peeling that away there? So that opening goes down in the cavity. So we just need to make sure we put the new ones on the exact same way. using a pick to pry them out of the cavities there. So we find a new one that fits this size. Looks like we're gonna go with that guy. <clears throat> All right, new seal in there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, Get that good and lubricated with some fresh new transmission fluid. And then move on to the lip seal on the piston. Match up a new one of the appropriate size. Okay, new seal, it's just that easy. Go ahead and get this one lubed up nice as well. From my last one I learned that these can be a pain. We're gonna use a feeler gauge to work that lip seal in 
very carefully. You don't want to cut that lip seal. You don't want to force this thing in there. I'm going to be real careful getting this back in there so you don't damage that lip seal. From what I understand, the magic number is 10 thousandths. So we have a 10 thousandths feeler gauge. Just going to get that down in there, apply pressure while we work this around. actually see it working right there. in because I can't get my shim down in there anymore so I think I think we're there loads of fun but we're there back to installing springs <laughs> next is intermediate clutches these clutches, surprisingly, for as old as they are, look really, really good, but we're uh, putting new ones in anyway, because we have them. So we're gonna start with a steel, then a clutch, then a steel, then a clutch. You're, you're picking up a pattern here, steel, then a clutch, then steel, then a clutch, yeah. Pretty pretty easy to figure that pattern out, isn't it? <coughs> Second speed gear. All right, and then our hold down plate thing. And it's all held in by a snap ring. This one is why I have a hole in my bench. Let's move this over here. The bench over here so we can drop this in. Did that in the last one. It makes life a whole lot easier to be able to set this upright. The top plate, this stuff just looks really dark. But again, the clutches in here look great. So, really very little wear in the clutches. The steels look fine. There's definitely more wear on this one than there was the last one. But yeah, everything's just fine. We're going to go ahead and put this all back together. This is a wavy plate. Make sure you pay attention to that. That's important. It's basically a spring. So that one uh, was in first. The wavy is going to go in first. Make sure we pay attention to that. I'm gonna put this back in the order it came out. We need to pull this next uh, piston out so we can change the piston seals. In lieu of special tools for this spring, we're just gonna go ahead and use a couple of clamps. I don't know if that's gonna work. I'll be able to get that snap ring started, but they're gonna be in the way to get it all the way out. And the clamps hit that. May need to go back to the drawing board on this one. Let's see if we can get it started at least. Where's my bendy pick? There you are. Go ahead. 
So we got it started. Let's just see if we take the tension off, if we can continue that snap ring coming off. No, oh, hey, look, it just popped off anyway. Okay, another pile of springs out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this other piston out. All right, this piston is out. Now we can change these lip seals. Again, there were more lip seals. Pay attention, this one goes that way the seal's open, and this seal is open the same direction. So make sure we put them back in the same way. In order to dual feed my direct drum, I just need to leave this lip seal out, which this lip seal was already left out. So now I'm starting to doubt whether this transmission was still a bone stock 1972 transmission. Someone may have had it apart and already omitted that seal. I don't know. But I'm leaving that seal out. Just gonna replace the seals on the piston. Remember the last lip seals I installed were a real pain. This one's even worse. I have an internal and an external lip seal that I have to fight at the same time. So excited. Luckily I played it close to the line. Oh, 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 I got it. Wow. <sighs> yeah, I got it. That was, that's worth celebrating. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, now we have to put all these springs back in again. Okay, bunch of springs. Let's clean this plate up a little. Penis. All right, spring retainer. So again, in lieu of the proper tool, my friends all left me, but it took three of us to get this thing compressed. Hey, look, there's one. There's another one. Where's my super suit? And they're wearing super suits. Good Lord. What would I have to deal with down here? So anyway, now you need to get the snap ring snapped in place, and this piece is done. So now it's time to start putting a... Uh, putting my steels and clutches in again. Again, this one has a wavy, so we're gonna start with the wavy. And then a steel. Not this tired old clutch, but a brand new one. Okay, my last clutch, and then my top steel plate. Clutches are in the drums. That's all set, so now back to my instructions, back to putting pieces inside the case. So we have our next planetary gear set we're gonna drop in. There she is. Next is a shim and a four tab washer, which is this guy. Shim didn't come out of it, mm -hmm. so Shim's not going in it. Four tab washer, actually keys. Let me bring in here and show you this. So the four tabs on the washers actually key in those yeah. four where the pinions are. So that drops right into there. Next is the outer piece of the shell. Seat it down in there, and then also our other uh, 
other b washer or whatever we're calling that or other yeah it's a washer i guess is on there now it's time for our forward drum all right so this is the forward drum so we drop this down in here you have to wiggle it there went one as you wiggle it and turn it you're going to feel it going past the clutches there went another one You're aligning the clutches as you're lowering it down. Yeah, they're all lined right up in there, so I, maybe I did have it. I just didn't think I did. Now I'm going to find it all again. An extra drop in a bearing. Index is right on there. Again, put in the old one. Feels good. Should be replacing, but we're not. So we drop the bearing in. And then we can drop our next drum down on here. And by drop, I didn't mean that, but that's what happened. I'm just going to wiggle it until you, get, you feel those clutches. Engaging and dropping down a little bit more each time. That must be it because I can see where it in, dropped into the sun shell down in there. So that's got to be all the way down because I can't wiggle it and turn it anymore. Oh, okay. I did get it to drop a little bit by turning the main shaft. Now it says we drop in the new band. Man, lube works great. Drops right in there. So in this case, this heavier ring goes on first. that and then our first clutch last piece to go on is the wavy. Whoa, calm down there. That should be I it. I do this assembly video all as one video, but there's just way too much information. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here. Hopefully you guys have learned some things, enjoyed my video. Uh, please hit that like button, subscribe. Certainly leave some comments. Uh, we'll be back for... Uh, the third installment of this transmission build where we get the pump resealed and put back together and then we get down to the valve body. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.